Bharti and we are here at Open Suze Conference in Prague, and today we have with us Panos. Uh, I was looking at your talks here, and it was uh, on serverless. Yeah. And because serverless these days is kind of a hottest topic. But, but the funny thing is that even if the word is serverless, there is a server in yes, serverless. Yes, yes, exactly. So can you explain, you know, from your perspective, what is serverless? Yeah, sure. Well, the word serverless itself is a sarcasm to the technology itself. It's also a buzzword that everybody hears and say, what? So um, serverless is basically a way that uh, um, you can use function as a service, uh, meaning like uh, nowadays everybody runs applications in containers. And uh, back in the day, we used virtual machines. What is the problem with virtual machines? And we went up to containers. Uh, first of all, um, uh, you, in order to realize that the virtual machine is online, you have to wait a boot time. So you don't know that this machine exists because you don't see it. It's virtual. And you realize it when it's online. That's the first thing. And the, stand, and the second thing is that virtual machines, in terms of space, storage, is quite big. Qcow images we talk in terms of gigabytes. In, in, in uh, case of containers, they are very small. We talk about in terms of megabytes and also you can realize that they are online almost immediately in terms of milliseconds. Now we live in the area that containers are still not enough for us like microservices and we chop down these microservices into even smaller units called functions so uh, functions all together, they basically uh, make your service. And the good thing is that um, since you have a container, which is small, and, a, and uh, um, a, container, a container which is small and fast, if you put code that is small and fast execution like functions, then basically if you have an event-based uh, in infrastructure, let's say you have a WordPress site, and uh, you use functions or something like that, then when somebody visits your site, your site doesn't need to be online in that case. Uh, the Nginx can start only when somebody asks for it, I means like the service, the web server that in, in that case, doesn't have to be online. Why? Because it can be online so fast in terms of milliseconds, so the user doesn't realize that this thing doesn't exist before, he doesn't feel any delays. So if he doesn't feel any delays, what's the point of having this running? So uh, some might say that another term of serverless is not yet a service as a service because the service is not running. The th the, now, why it's so hot? Because it uh, makes you spend less money, like considerably less money, uh, like even 90% less. Uh, I saw to my presentation that there are some, in terms of, of numbers, I think one company was paying $10,000 in AWS and using serverless, they dropped down to $350, which is huge. So people will look into that just for this because money. And the second thing is fast. So uh, if you ask me why uh, uh, everybody's not going into serverless right now, first of all, it's new technology. With all new technologies, now it's the time that the technology is cost effective, so people start looking into it. It's not that mature yet. Uh, there are many implementations, there is no any standard way. That's why the CNCF is now uh, looking into that. Actually, last year they created a, a talk. Uh, technical oversight committee or something like that and they try to standardize the way people write those functions and get and send those ev events. Um, so it might not be that everybody is using it right now but I think in the next five years it will spread like a wildfire because of these two things cost and speed. But uh, can serverless be an answer to all the applications? No. No, uh, there are uh, websites and servers.lol, you can visit this website and you can uh, put there your application, how many traffic you expect to have and, the, and it will make the website is, is uh, backed by AWS, I think, and it will make the calculations if it makes sense for you to use it or not, if you are going to save money or not. 
but uh, serverless is not meant to replace everything, it's meant to be an extra tool for your ecosystem to make, to make it even smoother and faster. It's not meant to replace your, your, your whole thing. Yeah, because you said, you know, in five years, you know, everybody will be using it. That's why I asked a question. You know? yeah, 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 exactly. I mean, all these things with CI, CD, having bots uh, go to IRC or Slack channels and say, oh, like event-driven stuff. The, the world is going to event-driven automation, not poll, not a polling, but uh, wait for the event. And when this is happening, then go into an action. And, and uh, one of the use cases, I may be wrong, of event driven uh, is uh, IoT devices. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because uh, if you have a thermostat, the temperature rose, you know, and then you have to trigger something. Or your exactly. camera spotted something, you trigger something. So do you think that all, will also have a massive use case in IoT devices? Yeah, sure. I mean, uh, imagine a use case, at least what I'm trying to build for my home, since we talk about home automation in that case. I have a Kubernetes cluster with Raspberry Pis. Uh, why? Because it's fun to do <laughs> and learn about the technology. And the next thing is that uh, what I'm doing is I'm writing my own functions, what I use at my home. For example, instead of buying a Amazon Echo or a Google um, Voice, I don't remember how these devices are called, I just write my own functions. Like if I say open, the, the light gets opened in that case. Uh, so you can automate your whole thing. Um, for example, when you go and buy Coca-Cola from a fridge and by the time you swipe your credit card to this vendor machine, what is happening is that an AWS Lambda function uh, evaluates your transaction. So Coca-Cola in that case pays only when you buy for a Coke. And the same things, like speaking of IoT devices, you can do at home also. That means Coke should be cheaper now because Coca-Cola <laughs> is not paying that much. <laughs> I don't know, might be. Okay, uh, you mentioned uh, Lambda and that is the thing that we, uh, with uh, serverless is that uh, there are three big cloud providers, you know, Google Compute is there, uh, Azure is there, and yeah. AWS is there. So when you talk about functional service, most of these services are tied to these platforms. So you get vendor logged. Yeah, yes, that's true. Uh, and actually, if you are going into this ecosystem right now, you are kind of locked to use JavaScript. Uh, but there are open frameworks like the one that I presented, like OpenFAS, mm -hmm. which allows you to use other languages, Python, Ruby, Go. And basically what you do, you deploy your framework that you like there, and then you are free to uh, uh, write your code in whatever language this framework supports. But yes, if you are going um, to use public clouds like Amazon AWS or Google Compute Engine or Azure, I'm sure the best way and the most comfortable way to, to use what they offer to you. But you can also deploy your Kubernetes cluster and then do your own thing. So, so there is no risk of vendor lock, are you saying? I wouldn't say so at the moment, no. Uh, I mean, um, it depends how much because Azure function, you know, once you have started using Azure, you cannot just move that workload to Google or you know to Lambda. Yes, in that case, you are locked. Yeah, exactly. So, in what is there case. to break that lock? Because the whole point of open source or even CNCF is uh, not. I mean, it's not their goal, but the point of open source is, you know, that you are vendor neutral. You can move around. Yeah, that's why there are frame frame frameworks like OpenFAS, as I said, mm -hmm. and the CNCF is trying to standardize that because it doesn't want to get locked in that case. So instead of doing the Amazon way or the Microsoft way, do it the open source way. Like pick a framework, this framework, I guess it will be easily supported by those platforms. And if they are not, still you can buy bust them and bootstrap your Kubernetes cluster there. So you mentioned OpenFast. So what is your involvement? Are you involved with the yeah. project? Uh, I'm involved by writing some blogs. Uh, back in the okay. day, I, I was uh, uh, quite a blogger writing Linux articles. So it picked my interest. So I started testing it. I saw how it works. I talked with, uh, uh, I also met the main, the main guy behind the project, Alex Ellis. Mm -hmm. And I really liked uh, the openness of the project in that case. First mm -hmm. of all, it has the open in the title of the project, which is cool. 
and then it's really community driven. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I am in their Slack channel and my next uh, goal is to build a package for OpenSUSE and having OpenFast tested in OpenSUSE in that case. Uh, because I use it and OpenSUSE gives me this possibility that if that you can involve into the process through OpenQA in that case. And I would like to make sure that OpenSUSE works with op 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 OpenFast 100%. So that's the f future in that case, how I will be involved into that project. And you were also talking about one of your pet projects that you're working on. Yeah. What's that? Uh, this is called a catastasis. It's a Greek name since everybody in the Kubernetes world, even Kubernetes is a Greek word. Uh, I was like, let's name it Greek. I'm Greek. So uh, a catastasis was a project that I started uh, last year uh, during Hag Week in SUSE. And basically I was uh, learning about containers. I was experimenting and this is why it's fun because uh, in the end I received a lot of good feedback about it. What this project is, is basically a way that you can test the whole ecosystem like uh, you have right now in OpenSUSE we have 55,000 packages and I would like just for fun to make sure that each one of those is able to be installed in a clean docker image meaning I download the OpenSUSE image I install one packet destroy it another one another packet so basically 50,000 containers in that case just to collect some statistics and I found really nice things. I found some bugs, I found some, st uh, some uh, other problems that are happening after the installation, in the post-installation scripts. And um, my next goal is actually to do the same thing for the rest of the distributions, at least for the big ones, Ubuntu, Fedora, Debian, and uh, have a website that I can aggregate statistics for all of those distributions, like how many packages are installable, are not, which version of Firefox is at that time, and if I can, to do it also serverless. Uh, I'm sure you are familiar with these websites that you visit and it's like, is it down or is it just me? Mm -hmm. So imagine something like uh, many people have repositories from personal developers because they need this package, that this package is not in the official distribution, so their system is not in a very good state or it's a custom state, let's say. So they want to know if this package that they're going to install is truly broken or it's their system problem. They can just visit this website in that case that will be uh, serverless. So a function will be try to install a package through zipper in a proper system and lets you know if this is okay or not. Some ideas, experimentation, it's mainly for fun. So let's see how this goes. I talked with the guys from the build service. There might be some use case there because there, there are some uh, corner cases that uh, still um, we don't cut in build service or we, we do cut them but not in the most efficient way without using containers so I'm looking forward. Okay, uh, we, we, we talked about serverless, we talked about open fast, we talked about anything else you think we should talk about or we covered the, some basic topics? Um, I think we covered most of them. I would just like to make a mention that now we have Cubic uh, it's, and uh, we would like uh, the community to embrace the project. We would like people that even they are not uh, very familiar with containers to give it a try, to give us some feedback. Because why I'm saying that, the way that OpenSUSE community works is that it's very open. So if uh, somebody has some use cases, he can influence the project and shape it in the way he wants to work with that. And exactly because it's the beginning of it, the influence has a big impact in that case. Uh, just to give you one example, uh, I was recently playing with rootless containers and in rootless containers there are some packages like Umochi, Scopio, stuff like that and I've put the test in OpenQA and now I make sure that Cubic always works with rootless containers. I don't know if any other distribution does that or if they have the packages but as I said, come over and let us know what you guys think about it. Awesome. Thanks for talking with me today and hopefully we'll see you again next time when your project is more matured and Let's we'll see, see next time what is the what is the state of stateless serverless application. Let's see. Let's see. Let's see.